guess the next speaker is Marco from uh, SUPD. He's come here. He's to speak about min max simulation. Okay. So thanks for the chair. So my name is Marco. So this is a joint work with Georgios. It's about chaos of online learning. So let me go straight forward to our main result in this paper. So we proved, we give a vigorous mathematical proof that multiplicative weights updates in zero-sum game is yup not chaotic in a, uh, in a space called cumulative payoff space. So for people who are familiar with the topics, so you may probably recall like 20 years ago, we have the, uh, people have shown that the time average of multiplicative weights updates uh, is pretty well behaved. It converts to the approximate Nash equilibrium. So, but we show that the daily behavior is pretty chaotic. There is no pattern, so to speak. And for people who are not familiar with the, this topic, so I'm trying to, I'm going to explain the three keywords in this statement and try to convince that this is an interesting and perhaps also surprising result. And there is also one more point I want to note. So the proof technique we use in this paper is not only for games. So it's actually pretty general for quite a general class of numerical iter iterative algorithms. So first of all, so let me talk about what is zero-sum games. So it's often considered as the easiest class of games. And there is a very strong mathematical reason behind. So uh, s around 70 or 80 years ago, John von Neumann's uh, linear, uh, linear programming duali duality implies that for two-person zero-sum games, the next equilibrium can be characterized or can be computed using two linear programs that capture each player adopting the best unilateral defensive strategy. So if you don't know what that is, it doesn't matter. So the important thing is that there are two linear programs which allow the Nash equilibrium to be computed in polynomial time. Instead, um, in general games, uh, this can be PPAD complete. So our results says that uh, probably the most well-known learning algorithm in zero-sum game is, cha uh, is chaotic, even in this easiest class of games. So the next question is uh, what it means by chaos or unpredict uh, unpredictability. So we use this word pretty often in daily life, but what is really the mathematical definition? <coughs> so here, uh, the formal definition will be a little bit technical to digest within a short talk. So I'm trying to go uh, give you an informal definition. So <coughs> the idea is the following. So suppose you have two starting points which are uh, distinct but very close by. So you can think of them as the perturbation to each other. And then you use these two points as the starting points to the online algorithm. And then you uh, evolve it using the algorithm. And then it will generate two paths. And then uh, by Yapunov chaotic, it means that the distance between these, uh, these two, two paths increase exponentially with time. And uh, and uh, this is the factor e to the power ct. So in dynamical systems, so the uh, constant c is uh, referred to as the Yapunov exponent. And you can see that it, when the uh, constant c is larger, then it means that the system is more chaotic. And here is a pictorial illumination of what might be happening. So for a computational perspective, so we note that the, pers uh, the perturbation can occur due to many reasons. It can occur due to measurement errors, but most importantly, it, it can occur due to just one of errors. Because when you run the algorithm, our computer do not have infinite precision. So when you run the algorithm, every step you need to do a one-off. And this kind of one-off errors may accumulate to lead to a devastating different outcomes in the, in the, in the long run. <coughs> okay, so this is a formal definition, I won't go through it. And another thing we, uh, we want to point out is that uh, in our work, so the chaotic behavior will not occur forever, but it will up to a certain time limit, which I, if you, you want to understand more, I, will, I can explain in the poster. <coughs> 
Okay, so the next thing is multiplicative ways updates and the dual space. So I guess most of you are somehow familiar with MWU, so I will just go and talk about what is the payoff space. So this is the formula that converts the pay uh, cumulative payoffs to each strategy to a probability di distribution. And so uh, the space that contains X is called the primal space, or the uh, uh, oh yeah. And the uh, space that contains the cumulative payoffs is called the cumulative uh, uh, dual space, which is what we show the chaos occur in. That's <coughs> okay, so in the remaining four minutes, I will talk about the uh, uh, proof technique. And there are several extensions which I will not go through, but I want to convince you that uh, by, you, by, this ex by having the results of these extensions, where the main message is that chaos is robust in online learning. So, so the proof technique is, uh, has a decades of history in physical science, but it's pretty new in computer science, and it's called Fordium analysis. So, so this is the picture that I've shown uh, with two different starting points. And then the idea is the following. So instead of looking at two starting points, we look at a set of starting points with positive volume or positive Lebesgue measure. And then we just do the, same, uh, uh, do the same thing as two points. We look at how this set is evolved using the online algorithm. So this is uh, one possible thing. So the set evolves into a strange shape. And so th this is pretty artificial, but this one is more natural. So it's generated using a game called Matching Pennies, which is a simple zero-sum game. And then from the beginning, it's uh, starting with a set that is in green. And then uh, as the, it evolves, it will be, uh, become the purple, pink, blue, and eventually to the red set. So you can see that the volume is expanding. And the, uh, th and the main proof tally here is that if we can show that the volume is exponent uh, increasing exponentially, then by a simple arg uh, geometric argument, we can also argue that the diameter of the set is also increasing exponentially. And hence, uh, we can use the second statement to say that uh, the system is the Arpinov chaotic. Okay. And then the next thing is that, okay, so volume analysis seems to be a very nice idea, but how do we implement it mathematically? It turns out that it has a long history and we can just follow the, what, what has been derived. And probably people that are doing their calculus class already learned it, but you probably don't realize that it can work in this case. So it's called multidimensional integration by substitution. Uh, so here is a simplified version of integration by substitution. So there is an update rule that is uh, st plus the epsilon at uh, the step size times some function f. And then if, the math, if this iterative rule is injective from a set s to s pi, then the volume of s pi can be computed using an integral, okay, uh, which is the determinant of some matrix that involves the Jacobian of f. And then the key message is that when you expand the determinant, so uh, for MW, uh, MW case, so the integrand will be one plus C epsilon square plus epsilon to the power four. So the constant here will dictate whether the volume expands or the, uh, contracts. And our key lemma in this paper is that the C is always zero in two's person zero sum game. So there are some extensions and I will not go through that. So this is the last result about long zero sum game. So uh, I will stop for 10 minutes and uh, 10 seconds to allow you to see what it is. So it's a, some kind of new results in game dynamics. Thank you.
uh, you mean on the folium? Uh, on the folium? So, so since the average converts to approximate Nash equilibrium, so we expect that it will, the volume will contract. So. Yeah, so, yes. So there, actually, there are uh, so there is some results that I, di I didn't present here, but it's a result similar to this one. So by showing that it's chaotic in the dual space, we have some results above the primal space, which says that some of the densities in the primal space is very small. If even it's close, it was originally close to the Nash equilibrium. Next speaker is Minda Xiao from Stanford and he's going to speak about selective prediction. <laughs> 